Right now, thousands of people in Armenia and Artsakh are living under dangers and constant threats from their neighbors, at the same time mourning the loss of countless people, their neighbors, family members, loved ones who are killed, captured, deported, tortured, or illegally arrested, U.S. Congressman Adam Schiff said at the Armenian National Committee conference. Settling territorial disputes, which have caused deep suffering to the Armenian people, will require patience and time. There are, of course, prospects for successful diplomatic solutions, and the EU will stand with the Armenians, offering the necessary assistance in rebuilding and finding a balanced compromise in the conflict, and which does not add to the huge losses suffered by Armenia. Fabio Massimo Castaldo, Vice President of the European Parliament, said in his video message during Monday's conference of the Armenian National Committees and Offices. On November 26th, at his meeting with Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan and Russian President Vladimir Putin, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev described the ongoing targeted killings of civilians and servicemen by the Azerbaijani armed forces, a few and accidental incidents. This statement by the President of Azerbaijan is nothing but a large-scale systemic violation of the fundamental rights of Armenians by Azerbaijan and calling them accidental incidents is an attempt to cover up the next manifestations of the policy pursued in recent decades. Artsakh Ombudsman Geram Stepanyan has written on his Facebook page. A Yerevan call ruled today to extend former Defense Minister David Tonoyan's detention for two more months. Initially, Tonoyan was detained for two months on September 30th and since was held at the Yerevan jail. Tonoyan, who served as Defense Minister from 2018 to 2020, is accused of embezzling about $4.7 million, as well as other crimes. No exact date for a conversation between Russian President Vladimir Putin and his U.S. counterpart Joe Biden has been set yet, but it may be agreed at any moment, Russian presidential spokesman Dmitry Peskov told the media on Monday. No, there is no such understanding for the time being, Peskov said when asked when the two leaders might have a telephone call. He confirmed that their contact might take place by the end of the year, but there is no agreed date at the moment, he said. Turkey is ready to act as a mediator between Ukraine and Russia, President Tayyip Erdogan said on Monday, despite having angered Moscow by selling armed drones to Kiev earlier this year amid tensions in eastern Ukraine. Speaking to reporters on a flight from Turkmenistan, Erdogan was cited as saying by NTV and other media Turkey wanted the Black Sea region to be in peace, adding he was discussing the issue with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin frequently. The trial of former Georgian President Mikhail Saakashvili in a Tbilisi court was accompanied by clashes between opposition activists and police outside the building, DW reported. The trial is being held in the wake of Saakashvili's alleged abuse of power when law enforcement officials were ordered to crack down on protests on November 7, 2007, as well as the attack on Imedi TV. The Omicron coronavirus variant is likely to spread internationally, posing a very high global risk of infection surges that could have severe consequences in some areas, the World Health Organization said on Monday. The UN agency urged its 194 members to accelerate vaccination of high priority groups and in anticipation of increased case numbers to ensure mitigation plans are in place to maintain essential health services. 189 new COVID-19 cases were confirmed in Armenia yesterday, 21 people died.